Hello everybody, today we are releasing Builderius CSS framework. It's an alpha version, same like the site builder, and it's built to go with the builder. It's, it's based on Pico CSS, uh, which is a minimal classless framework. I'm going to show it right now, just quickly. So it's uh, based on the idea that uh, you shouldn't have to add a class to style something. Uh, it should provide some styles out of the box. We extended this with some classes. We use a lot of variables because Bluderius uses this framework instead of the theme settings that are usually what these kinds of builders use. How is using a built-in framework different from the theme settings? It provides you more flexibility. You can remove it completely. You can change how it works. You can replace it with another one. Um, and it does the same thing the theme settings do, but it really gives all the control to the user. So if you don't want some setting that uh, theme setting has, you can't remove it. Here you can. This framework um, doesn't contain everything you should need for styling global um, kind of uh, globally your site. Uh, it expects to be expanded by the user, but we need your feedback and participation to make it really work for everyone or for, it, for as much people as possible. This is not going to be a full tutorial. This is a walk around the framework part of the builder. So I'm going to the builder and I'm going to tell you that, first of all, where the framework lives, right? The, the selectors panel is produced by the framework. So when there is no framework, there are no items here. Same is valid for the variables. CSS variables are most like theme settings. Uh, and our intention is to really make it organized in such a way. However, with the ability to reorganize. Uh, well, if you're in selectors, just press the CSS button, go to all, and this is the entire framework. Even if you don't like it, just select it like this, remove it, and you're just going to get pure HTML. I don't want that, so I'm going to bring it back. OK, so this is where it is, right? So how to explore it? I think the best way for now, uh, because early alpha still has issues here, um, so let's let's just open CSS and stay in the selector, right? And so when you click around selectors, you can really, uh, you know, see what what each thing does. And you can also do things like this. VPN will, for instance, show you the button-based um, classes, and so you can easily see like various ones, right? Not all selectors will be present as individual selectors because we wanted to not make it too big or not repeat too much. There is a lot of things that are kind of uh, made as part of the list of elements, like where button, button, like all of these things, for instance. This, this is a selector that tells you, okay, so if it's a button element, if it has a class of button, if it has a role of button or type submit, make them all look a certain way, right? Um, this makes it us not having to repeat this for every one of them, but groups them like this. So let's see how the classless part of the framework helps us. Well, it provides styles for HTML elements without having to add any classes to begin with. So I'm going to select my page content. I'm going to add a section to it. And then within the container, I'm just going to add a couple of HTML elements. So let's, let's do something like this. I'm going to come here and hold shift. I'm going to do like, I think that's six. Paragraph, I'm going to add like a link, a button link, a list. Um, what else should I add? Mm, perhaps that's it. Um, now I'm going to go here and change the markup for each of these. I'm going to duplicate the paragraph, which is here. I'm going to change the paragraph to a block quote. And for, for now, that's it. I'm going to escape all this. And it looks nice. So what about classes? Uh, I, we mentioned in the uh, framework page on the GitHub that it's responsive. So how is it responsive? Well, it has uh, the typography scaling done, but it also has some um, layout stuff, uh, simple one. So let's, let's, let's try to do that. So first of all, let's do flex column 
on the container to provide some gaps. Okay, so that, that's a little bit. So this is just making a vertical um, flex container. And then I'm going to add a div to this element. And to the div, I'm just uh, going to add the grid the grid class, right? Within it, I'm going to add a couple of buttons. So let's do something like, where is the button? Okay, so button link. So this is a link that contains the button class. So I'm going to hold shift again and press this four times. Okay, so we have four of them. And I'm going to go down to the form and do the same thing with um, the button HTML element. And so this is um, the grid uh, providing the layout. Let's add some more classes. So something like primary, button primary, uh, secondary, button secondary, outline, button outline. And this will work on button element in the same way. So and finally outline. Okay. So we have some style here. If we now uh, resize, you'll see that the grid uh, is acting responsibly. So where are these? You go to selectors, you go to classes, and you find them here, right? Uh, alternatively, you go to CSS, you come here, and you scroll and find, and you can also use the find function, which is control, uh, control F, and it's control both on the Mac and PC, and you can do something like button, and it's gonna, you know, show you this. Let's move to CSS variables. So CSS variables is probably the place that looks most like theme settings do. And so what is the difference? Uh, why not use the theme settings then? Well, because this is completely editable by the user. Unlike the theme settings, which may have many of the uh, settings you don't want and not have settings you would like to have, here it's completely under your control. Um, these categories are automatically generated from the names of the variables. So what does that mean? So I can do something like dash dash special value and maybe just use a custom one and uh, add it like 12 pieces. I don't know what this is. I'm just going to save it. And once you do that, it's going to make a special category and it's going to have this value inside. And I can keep adding my stuff to special. I can do like special um, color and I'm going to just do custom and do something like CCC, CCC, and save that. And maybe let's do another one, special border. And I'm going to add this one as well. And let's just do some borders and dash. Um, violet. And uh, what's the last one? Two pixels. Okay, so I'm gonna save this one, go back to my special, and see that I have all these, right? Um, so I can, from here, I can also use the UI to edit this. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just enter them like this. So this is one way. If you just want to add something, have it really kind of uh, tucked away in a category, this is the way. Um, However, uh, I want you to notice what just happened. It uses the first item before the dash to create a category. And you can use this to really um, organize your variables nicely. So how we use it is that we have some basic ones which are grouped like this, like color, for instance, or font. Right? So this is like really global, used everywhere. Um, but then we have like specific ones for specific elements. And this is usually uh, like, I guess this is like tokenization. Uh, this is making, using global variables and then kind of, re, uh, um, kind of repurposing them for specific use case. 
So for instance, we have a button here, right? It currently just has these two. But if you would like to have, uh, for instance, use some color, and I'll do something like button BG color, I could totally do that. So I can go to custom. I can uh, here use um, kind of a static value or I can reuse something. So maybe I, I just want to color error here, right? So I'm just going to do var This obviously doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, but uh, yeah, now this is my button color, right? Now if you now go back to my button, which is somewhere yeah, here, it's going to be here, right? And this is a way to organize every style or every value uh, you want for the buttons to be here. Uh, you can put them under button. And I believe this is much better organization going forward. Uh, of course, we want to hear your feedback and see what you think. So we have a fluid typo typography, but perhaps you don't like these sizes. How can you change them easily? In the future, we're going to have a calculator for these. But un until then, we've made the CSS fit nice uh, with things like Utopia Calculator. So if you, for instance, come here, um, you have to name the variables um, in a you know in, in the way that we name them, then you can set your sizes to be something completely different. I'm do I'm going to do something like crazy, like super um, super big differences in sizes. And you can go here. You can copy this. Go to build edit, open the CSS, and go to all CSS. And from the line 10 all the way to 15, replace what we have pasted before. Okay. Uh, I hope you like what you see. Uh, you can use GitHub to give us feedback, but you can also uh, write us in the Facebook group uh, or on the email. Uh, these informations are available uh, at the bottom of the framework where you can reach us, um, but also uh, will be available uh, at the bottom of this video. Thank you, everybody, and see you in the next one.